Greetings travellers, in this vid I'd like to show you what I went through to make this relatively simple looking hollow chess table. It was directly inspired by this famous scene in Star Wars, and now that we have the wonder projector, I thought it might be a good challenge to build one. My sleazy low orbit bar and grill, the Blue Cthulhu, would be the perfect setting for it, as it's a bit of a wretched hive of scum and villainy. So all I had to do was move a bit of furniture to make some space and take out some cuboids. I could also access the underside, which I figured would be necessary later. So I did a bit of digging and I learnt that the game is actually called Dejaric. Wikipedia provided a lot of information. A lot. Dear Lord. <laughs> My main focus would be on how to recreate the playfield but I realised most of it would have to be done free placement. I decided to use a flipped ice blob statue as the base table and a facet of a couple of resized pyramids for the wedges of the board. I had to tilt them very slightly off horizontal so they could partially slide under each other. Then with a bit of experimenting, I used two tables to align the pyramids at the correct height. I left them slightly raised so I could use the beveled edges to join them together. The next step was to find my holographic combatants. For this, I scoured the NMS coordinate exchange and went hunting. Great fun. I knew I wouldn't be able to find similar creatures to the movie, so I didn't really try. Weird and eclectic would suffice. After my collection was complete, I had to adjust the height of each projection individually, as the gap between the projector and the creature was different each time. Fiddly, but I knew it would bug me if I didn't do it. So I had all my parts ready, but to avoid cascade deletion issues, I'd have to place the items down in the correct order. In builds like this, cascade deletions can undo hours of work in an instant. Not fun. <laughs> So I started with the holograms, moving the canisters in place after free-placing a temporary floor to keep it all at the correct height. I used two different colours so I could keep an eye on the centre. I made a flipped table the size of the ice blob base to make sure the holograms were all in the right spots and tweaked their positions where needed. Then onto the wedges, starting with the small inner ring. I had to temporarily deactivate the holograms as they collided with the wedges. Positioning these in free placement was a bit of a nightmare and it was easily the most time consuming part of this build. I had to do the inner ring at least three times so the last piece would fit correctly. And with my borderline OCD satisfied, it was time to move on to the outer ring. But first I made a save point so I could reload to avoid redoing too much. Nope, not good enough. So I finally got the outer ring done as best as I could. I then reactivated the holograms to make sure it was okay before placing the table, but something had happened and the dino's legs were cut off. Bugger. <laughs> Luckily, I could still access the flask and adjust the height without deleting more than one wedge. Another quick test and I could see the dino's little toes, so now onto the central disc. I used an upside down vintage dish, then stacked another on top. And the bottom dish will also provide something for me to glitch the blob statue onto. So I removed the floor so I could access the underside of the table and glitch the blob upside down using a hanging lamp. It's fortunate that the pyramids left a convenient little hole for me to place the table flush. Now all that was left to do was to replace the cuboid rooms and add some controls on the side. 
I tried messing around with the scaled down peel lights, but the lighting was too strong, so I scrapped that idea. Add a rug for coziness, and I was done. So there we are, I hope that was interesting to see what went into making this. And as always, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you later.